Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Late last year, there were some press releases and articles basically saying that physicists warn Earth could feasibly descend into chaos. So what are they saying? Well, they're saying that the impact of human activity on the Earth's system could result in unpredictable chaos from which there is no return, physicists have calculated. Well, let's hope that they're wrong. They used a theory conceived to model superconductivity, and they show in a preprint paper, so it still has to be peer-reviewed, but it's a scientific paper. So they say that this year, um, well, the paper was this year, or last year, 2023, but they said that after a certain point, we will not be able to restore equilibrium to Earth's climate. We'll go past uh, enough tipping points that rather than go to another stable state, we'll have a chaotic system which might jump between various states. So a finite amount of human activity could result in a hothouse Earth from which there is no return, the research suggests. So they detailed their work in a paper that was made available um, the uh, year before on the preprint server RXIV, which is often, um, you know, papers are often put on there and then they can be publicly peer reviewed and then peer reviewed by their peers, three uh, generally scientists in the same field. Uh, but that process hasn't been continued yet for this paper for whatever reason. So anyway, the implications of, of climate change are well known, droughts, heat waves, extreme phenomena. But if the Earth system gets into the region of chaotic behavior or chaos, we will lose all hope of somehow fixing the problem. So for some years now, we've had extreme weather events that are occurring more regularly. Wildfires, storms, temperatures, Climate scientists have warned that this is a consequence of human activity, the burning of fossil fuels, deforestation, increases in farming, etc. So we've, it's been proposed that we have a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene, which is still, I think, being voted on to make it official. You know, a period, of course, in which human activity has led to a significant and marked impact on the entire Earth system composed of the geosphere, biosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. Okay, so the Anthropocene would basically follow the Holocene, which started about 11,700 years ago. And scientists propose the beginning around of the, of the Anthropocene around the middle of the 20th century. So around 1950 or so, the peak in the nuclear era. Um, so what these physicists did is they modeled the transition from the Holocene to Anthropocene as a phase transition. And they calculate its future trajectory accordingly. Now, phase transitions are very common. The term refers to how a material changes from one state to another. Like a solid melting into a liquid is a phase transition. A liquid boiling into a gas or evaporation is a Another phase transition. Metals also can undergo transitions from a normal state uh, where electrons meet resistance in the, in the metals to a superconducting one where electrons can travel freely throughout the metal uh, without any loss. So each of these phase transitions has a tipping point at which an equilibrium state undergoes a profound shift into another state. Now, the Earth system, of course, is not a material, but research shows that phase transition modeling can be used to predict climate shifts with some success. So the theory in, in, um, the theory in metals, where they transition from a normal state to a superconducting one, is called Ginsburg-Landau theory, right? It's a model for superconductivity. So they use the same theory and applied it to the Anthropocene based on temperature starting at a Holocene equilibrium point. Now, human influence is limited, right? Our world has a finite amount of habitable space, a finite amount of resources, and a finite rate at which we can use them. 
So given these capacities, the researchers mapped the possible outcomes of the Anthropocene phase transition using what they call a logistic map, which is a tool to explore how complex outcomes and even chaos can evolve from a si simple point. You know, and there's a there's a theory about this this sort of stuff. I'm not going to talk about all the details of the theory, maybe a few, but the results showed that we're not necessarily headed for certain climate doom. We might follow a regular and predictable trajectory, the end point of which would be a climate stabilization at a higher average temperature point than what we have now. That's still not great, given the deadly effects we're already seeing on humans and other animals. But the worst case, the more extreme case, is that Earth runs into havoc. This means that the planet's system evolves into chaotic behavior, extreme seasonal fluctuations and weather events that precludes the prediction of the future behavior of the system, making it impossible to mitigate. So it would be taken basically out of human hands to have any agency to do anything. That means it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to claw our way back to a stable climate. You know, I think things like solar radiation management and carbon dioxide removal, those type of things on a large scale on our Earth system could let us claw our way back to a stable climate. That would be my hope anyway. And also, you know, I think the most logical thing, but it could be a lot much worse. We could actually completely lose a stable climate and the ability to go back to a stable climate. So dividing the human activities into its multiple components, the physicists studied a case with only two of those components following logistic maps and interacting with each other. Even in this simple case, they observed the emergence of chaotic behavior in the equilibrium points of the Earth's system. This leads to potentially important consequences if at least some components of the human activities actually follow logistic maps, which is quite a reasonable hypothesis given the physical limitations of the planet-wide system we live in. But the outcome isn't inevitable. So they say, you know, we need to consider that it is a real possibility when we design strategies to mitigate climate change and manage the Earth system in the future. Okay, so that's the gist of the of the article. Um, there was another um, there was another article. This was in Live Science. Um, physicists predict Earth will become a chaotic world with dire consequences. So again, if the Earth system gets into the region of chaotic behavior, we will lose all hope of somehow fixing the problem. Okay, so this is a danger. We don't have unlimited time to, um, to fight climate change, to stop it from getting much, much worse, right? We're not just making Earth warmer, we're also making the climate chaotic, is what the study is suggesting. Okay, so the... Um, the, the, so the preprint, uh, it draws a broad and general picture of the full potential of human activity on the climate, and the picture isn't pretty. The study doesn't present a complete simulation of a climate model. It paints a broad sketch of where we're heading if we don't curtail climate change and our unchecked use of fossil fuels. The implications of climate change are well known, right? The drought, heat waves, extreme weather. But if the Earth system gets in the regime, the region, region or regime of chaotic behavior, we will lose all hope of somehow fixing the problem. Basically, it's now or never to stop climate disaster. So Earth periodically experiences these massive changes in climate patterns, going from one stable equilibrium to another, you know, crossing tipping points. And these shifts are usually driven in the past by external factors like changes in the Earth's orbit, the Milankovic cycles, or a massive surge in volcanic activity like the changes with the Deccan traps going off. But past research suggests that we're now entering a new phase, and this is one driven by human activity. So as humans pump more carbon into the atmosphere, we're creating a new Anthropocene era, it's a period of human influence climate system, something our planet's never experienced before. So, you know, we're talking about, so the phase transition physics um, is basically on the Earth system, the Earth's climate system. 
and the phase transition would lead to a new pattern of seasons and weather and the earth um, would experience a sudden and rapid change in patterns and our life on the planet plants and animals is just not adapted to that so they talk about it being a logistics problem you know where is the earth's climate headed that depends significantly on exactly what our activity is over the next few decades and it's not good right now so the mathematical tool again is called the logistic map the logistic map is great at describing situations where some variables such as the amount of carbon in the atmosphere can grow but naturally reaches a limit so it's often used to describe animal populations a logistic map animals can keep giving birth increasing their numbers but they reach a limit when they consume all the food in their environment where the predators get too hungry and consume them. So our influence on the environment is definitely growing. It has been for over a century, but it will naturally reach a limit. For example, the human population can only grow so large and can only have so many carbon emitting activities. Pollution will eventually degrade the environment. At some point in the future, carbon output will reach a maximum limit, and the researchers found that a logistic map can capture the future trajectory of that carbon output very well. So we can, we can go into chaos, right? In the best case, we reach a limit of carbon output. The Earth climate stabilizes at a new higher average temperature. This higher temperature is overall bad for humans because it still leads to higher sea levels and more extreme weather events, but at least it's stable. Like we, we moved from what was our stable state during the Holocene to another stable state, you know, with oceans much higher, sea level, um, weather more erratic, etc. But at least it's stable, right? So the Anthropocene in that case would look like previous climate ages, only warmer, but it will still have regular and repeatable weather patterns. But the, the worst case, of course, is that we just go, Earth's climate goes to chaos instead true mathematical chaos in a chaotic system there's no equilibrium and no repeatable patterns a chaotic climate would have seasons that change wildly from decade to decade or even year to year some years would experience sudden flashes of extreme weather others would be completely quiet even the average earth temperature may fluctuate wildly swinging from colder to hotter periods in relatively short periods of time it would become utterly impossible to determine in what direction Earth's climate is heading in this type of chaotic system. So think of, uh, you know, a pendulum. You know, we can figure out the physics of a simple pendulum. Uh, the Earth system could be chaotic, like a triple pendulum, which uh, is a dynamic system that can't be predicted. It's a chaotic system. So we have lots of good examples of chaotic systems. A chaotic behavior means that it will be impossible to predict the behavior of our system in the future, even if we know with great certainty its present state. It will mean that any capability to control and to drive the Earth's system towards an equilibrium state that favors habitability of the biosphere will be lost. Right, And uh, the, the, the modeling shows that above a critical, certain critical threshold temperature, a feedback cycle kicks in where a chaotic result would become unavoidable. Okay, so so that's the, the gist of it. It's that the physics could work out very bad for us. Now, a logistic map is just this sort of thing. You can check out the wiki page, Wikipedia page for it, but it's basically this sort of um, map where you have some state changing and then you reach a point of bifurcation. It can split into two different paths and you go along each of these paths separately and then at some point each path can split into two more states and this thing and, and everything repeats and repeats and repeats so that's the type of diagrams these logistic maps that you see trying to describe so you know a state this state is known now it can be in two possible air states but if you keep going it can split into all kinds of chaos so this is the problem right um you know you can get swings from one of these states to the other state and back again um it, that's what comes out in the math. Um, the Ginsburg-Landau theory, there's a Wikipedia page on it. It really explains, uh, you know, it's very complex math. It really basically explains 
uh, superconducting transitions. There's a superconducting transition temperature. Um, and uh, if you're on one side, then you get uh, normal metals with uh, resistance to flow of electrons. And uh, in the other state, you get zero, resistance goes to zero and you have a superconductor. So the physics can explain that transition in superconductors and you can use the same sort of thing uh, to look at the climate. So this is the, this is the preprint uh, paper, Chaotic Behavior of the Earth System in the Anthropocene. And I'm just going to talk about it briefly because there's a lot, you know, it's heavily math um, dependent, physics dependent. I just want to get the basic ideas to you, not go through the details. So it's shown that the Earth system can, due to the impact of human activities, behave in a chaotic fashion. The arguments are based on the assumption that the Earth system can be described by a land's Landau-Ginsberg model, which on its own allows for predicting that the Earth state evolves through regular trajectories in the phase space towards a hot house Earth scenario for a finite amount of human-driven impact. There's an equilibrium point for temperature fluctuations that exhibit these bifurcations, which I just talked about, and a chaotic pattern if the human impact follows a logistic map. Okay, so what this paper is, is it's basically looking at the, um, you know, the physics of the system. Um, and there's uh, lots of modeling and lots of equations. Here's where we are in the Holocene. You know, if we're going to a much warmer world, you know, we're sliding towards this sort of state. So you can look at stability landscapes. And if you go beyond certain conditions, you, know, you can break into instability and, and uh, unpredictable behavior. So there's all of these, I'm just, you know, gonna look, I'm not covering details of this. Um, you know, it'd take me a week to do it, but you've got this diagram here for, uh, this is the uh, bifurcation diagrams. So you have the parameter, one value, it can only be one value, and then suddenly it bifurcates into two and each, and then it goes along this, so it can go either here or here, it can only be in one state at a time, and then it goes up, and then it can split into another two possibilities, and, you know, eventually, it, each one, each time that happens, and you can get this very unstable, unpredictable activity. Here's another diagram of another parameter doing the same, you know, different parameters doing the same thing. Okay, so this paper is chock full of these bifurcation diagrams and then a whole bunch of equations and math and then more diagrams showing different possible states and splitting. Okay, so there's different parameters used to create the different curves um, and they model, you know, what happens and there's more diagrams. See, it's easy. All the diagrams are these bifurcation uh, sort of things happening. And you can see it's very fuzzy. So you can be in any of these states. You, you just can't predict what where you're going to be. You can predict maybe a maximum minimum, but, you know, and it, then it can get even really fuzzier here. Like you just you know that you're, you're, you're at a known curve and suddenly chaos breaks out and you could be any, you know, it's just, you can't predict what's going on. That's basically what, what this paper is showing. More of these nice bifurcation Diagrams, uh, maps, lo the logistic maps. So basically they use the, um, they describe the Earth system in terms of this theory of phase transitions, Landau-Ginsberg theory of phase transitions that, they, that, that well explains superconductors. They studied how it behaves if some of the variables accounting for human activities follow a behavior that can be modeled by the logistic maps, those bifurcation diagrams. They basically see that you end up with a quite rich uh, group of possible trajectories in the Earth system in the Anthropocene, including regular and predictable trajectories, but also bifurcations and then chaotic behavior. Okay, so basically, you know, we're, we're playing with fire with our present Earth system, and we can drive it into being completely chaotic according to the physics of the system. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a fascinating result theoretically. If I was up in space in a 
bubble, you know, spacecraft looking down. You know, I could look at this quite clinically and say, yeah, this is really interesting. But since I happen to be on the other side, on the Earth itself, and this is a possible uh, future state of it, then, you know, it's something that um, is really eye-opening and, uh, you know, might lead us all to become uh, philosophers, you know, lamenting on, well, humans had a good run, but it's, we're nearing the end, <laughs> basically. Uh, you know, we're, get, we're heading into chaos. Chaos uh, theory is a, is a very fascinating, interesting field. You know, um, if you haven't read about it, there's numerous books on chaos, uh, there's movies on chaos, uh, there's lots written about it in science, but also in, in the arts, you know, and, you know, we use that term in everyday human behavior. If something goes crazy, you know, we say that it's, it's chaotic or, you know, a hockey game might end, might, might, might turn into chaos. You know, one side scores, the other side scores, 10 penalties are given, you know, everybody's off the ice. Like, it's chaos. You, you just can't predict what the result is going to be. So, anyway, uh, an interesting set of, of physics um, papers. Uh, please consider going to my website, paulbeckwith.net, and donating to my PayPal to support my research and videos. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.